Okay, we're back at Dr. Serrano's office, and today I thought we would talk about um, blood work that you can get done that will give you some clues as to, you know, if you're headed for heart disease or not. It's a, it's a pretty hotly debated topic these days. So, uh, Dr. Serrano, what's your opinion on this? Okay, I'm going to talk specifically to the bodybuilding population. Okay, this is not to the generic population. Most bodybuilders will have a low HDL, okay? That is the biggest thing that they will have, and maybe high cholesterol, okay? Now, if you're in a high carbohydrate diet, some of them are, the triglycerides might be elevated. Now, none of these markers are, for me, important on the sense, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack, I'm going to have chest pains. No. Actually, I think they are, like, uh, debatable, number one, number two, it's a money-making scheme for drug companies, but there possibly there's some benefits to it. We know that HDL does decreases the chances you have in the heart attack. It depends what kind of particles. So now you can use division of particles. There are good particles and bad particles. Now, if I am a bodybuilder, okay, I'm going to concentrate not on those. I'm going to concentrate on insulin. Okay, two, homocysteine. And CRP. The reason I put those there, because you as a bodybuilder, you're working out all the time. You're having a diet, insulin levels are actually relating more to heart attacks than anything else. I know that the population doesn't tell you that. That's why diabetics have more heart attacks because of the insulin levels. One. Two, homocysteine is a, by definition, is a market when you B12 levels, folate, and now most people don't think about that, SAMI, they're low. If your homocysteine levels are also high, you can also actually have depression also because you have a lack of SAMI. And Sammy, I'm sure you guys heard of that on the street, is s adenosine methionine. It's, it's a supplement. Now, most people do not know that, but it's methionine, it's amino acid, that is involved on that. If you have a high, uh, high on eggs or things like that, of course, your homocysteine levels are going to go up if you do not approach supplementation. So that's why supplementation is very, very important. Now, CRP is an inflammatory marker, okay? And most people talk about this, and this is going to be the future, and that's how statins actually really work. Statins lowering cholesterol don't mean anything, but they do lower your CRP. I want you guys to know that because that, the literature doesn't show that, but it actually does. It lowers CRP. Now, which one is the best, best thing to lower CRP, believe it or not? Diet, by increasing your good fats, in specifically omega-3s, has shown to lower CRP. Also, believe it or not, B6 has shown to lower CRP tremendously. If you take if your CRP is really high and you take B6 and you take 25 milligrams, Serrano told you that, I learned that, okay, it will lower your homocysteine levels, I mean your CRP levels, just remember that. Your CRP levels are high, this is some kind of problem, we need to find out what your insulin levels are. Now, something that will increase your C CRP levels, and people don't want to talk about it, is mercury and lead. And I know that a lot of bodybuilders, the reason I put this here is because bodybuilders, when you ask them what they're eating for your diet, Tuna, 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 tuna. Tilapia. <laughs> Boring freaking But I mean, they have to do it. So mercury becomes a big deal. I have four bodybuilders here that had severe mercury levels, and they had very high CRP. I thought I checked the CRP first. It was really high. Then I went ahead and checked the mercury levels, and that's when we discovered it. We lacked, we back off of the mercury. We treated it. CRP was out to normal with B6. So that's your new little clues today. All right, thank you. Hey, sir. Thank you. Nice to see you today.